how's it going YouTube so in the background you can see this exciting gameplay and today's topic will be about what I believe is probably the best region and best map for quality of life purposes for making currency now I know this method kind of requires a lot of uh, what's it called atlas progression and getting your watch zone set up but I do believe it's worth it it's pretty fun you can see how many mobs are in blight and you can get try to guess the name of the map but actually the map name is in the right corner it's called ramparts actually a personal favorite of mine i don't know if i talked about in the last video but pretty much in this video i'm going to go over this money making strategy that i'm currently doing i'm going to go over the inputs and outputs and maybe tomorrow i will include the excellence because i didn't run the excellence but i think i should start running it because it gives people a much better grasp of how much money they're making and having concrete numbers is always better than me just telling you that something is good but i can just tell you it feels good to play and i like it and yeah so First of all, I'm going to go into my gear and pretty much talk about like the importance of making changes to your gear to fit the content that you're doing, right? So I have two types of belt. I will swap them out depending on what I'm doing. And I'm going to tell you about the belt that I was able to finally get. And yeah, so then I'm going to go over and talk about the total profit and what you can expect to have to put into each map. And then I'm going to showcase a nice little 140 splinter run, which is the most I've gone so far. Which is kind of sad because I was hoping to get 200, but I believe, right? So let's get right into it and go on to the gear. So for the gear, the main change is that I do use a headhunter now for the, the later maps. It does help a lot, but you would think it would help a lot more. I don't know what's different about it, but I think not having beyond on the map makes a huge difference for making headhunter not feel like undisputed king. But when you do Legion and you do Breach where you get a lot of rares, it is very noticeable. But there's at times at the start of the map where I don't have the Headhunter on because I'm wearing the Crystal Belt that I don't really uh, notice, what's it called, that the Belt is not on. So you can definitely farm everything with the Crystal Belt. And that's why I spent yesterday playing without the Headhunter and just using the Crystal Belt to show you that you don't need the Headhunter to actually do any of these farming strategies. It does make it more consistent and it does bring higher highs and it's just generally more fun to play when you get the soul eater buff or haste aura and you have more projectiles from the rares so yeah you can see it's a pretty big change in es 3.9k to 4.5k making the belt extremely good value now only other change i made was i using a different flask i was using uh what's it called an onslaught flask a staunching but i decided to use a cinder swallow urn now when you do like really juice content, you do get a lot of flash charges back because of how many mobs you kill. So this is like almost a perfect roll flask in terms of increased charges used and you can still see it uses 110 of 150. So in order to use the Cinder Swallow Urn, it will, you would almost be able to fill this flask up four times. But generally it is not a problem if we're doing like content that has a lot of mobs everywhere. So that's why... Even though GGG decided to nerf flasks, all it does is it means that it will bring more clear speed into the game. It will make players have to juice map more and it will make players have to play faster. So it's kind of a counterproductive nerf to the flask. Like nerfing the flask is not going to slow the game down. It's just going to make players have to go faster and choose builds that can go faster so their flask can be on 24-7. And this is especially the case for when you can use these orbs now, the instilling orbs which allows you to have the flash trigger whenever it reaches full. So it's even more important now than ever to have the clear speed necessary. So when using the head under, you see that my defenses go down a lot, negative 20% and with about 15%. So, oh yeah, someone also wants to buy a bone helmet. And bone helmet is actually another thing that's actually pretty good for this farming method. Long and I'm going to explain why after I showcase the rest of the gear that I'm using. But overall, nothing's really changed. I am still trying to save, uh, pay back the rest of the money that I use for the headhunter because I do need to pay it back. And I will start upgrading some of the gear soon. I think the Chaos Res is actually a huge problem. When you do Alpha Temples in the map, you have negative 20%. You could easily get one shot by Chaos Damage with only 3.8k life. So that's one thing I'm going to try to fix right away. And it's probably going to be replacing... This cluster over here. Oh wait, that one is Chaos Res, but I'm probably gonna be changing out this cluster, right? This one has Chaos Res too. Oh yeah, I well, pretty much all my Chaos Res comes from the jewels. Maybe I'll craft a boot and put Chaos Res on a suffix with Reforged Chaos. But basically, 
the gear is pretty much being tailored towards the content I'm doing and that's what everyone here should do. Like if you're doing bossing or you're doing the fear, you should not have Asinefs on, right? Because you're going to put temp chains on yourself, so you should have another pair of gloves, whether it's Hands of the High Templar or uh, rare ES gloves with a lot of ES. So very important to choose the right, what's it called, setup for your, what, whatever content you're doing. Now... I am kind of wanting to get a hatred ring or a wrath implicit ring because these rings are very important because I really need another gem slot. I think having another gem slot would be huge. And let's see if there's anyone who's actually corrupted one yet. I'm not sure how much these will be in the end. So 1.5 mirrors for uh, this level 23 zealotry, 12 exalts for. 12 exalts, oh yeah, make sure to never get one that's only 40%. If the ring is only 40%, it is trash. Do not get baited. So if you see one that's really cheap, look twice, see if this number is 40%. If it's not, and if it is 40%, don't touch it. So basically, you could probably try to get one with Discipline Effect. Discipline Effect does give a lot of ES. I'm not sure if anyone's actually selling a Discipline Effect for cheap. And if you are using a Cinder Swallow Urn, it could also be a good idea to try to get some fire damage to spells because you still ignite and do more damage. So that's just something to keep in mind if you do decide to use the Cinder Swallow Urn. So now we're going to do a discussion about this money making method that I think is pretty good. Now I'm running the map called Ramparts and you might be wondering why. Ramparts is actually a pretty straightforward map. If I had to put like a tier list of S tier maps for the Lyrimir, where the map is nice and long and has a and doesn't like loop around or circles or is big and squarish like burial chambers, Ramparts is probably up there along Promenade and Tropical Island. So all those maps are incredibly long. Port is another one that's actually pretty intriguing. If you put and you see Port is another, I think it's T14 this time around. Yeah. It was T14. Port is another extremely long map that I believe is extremely good for Bur for um, the Lira Mirror count. So for testing purposes, today I'm going to do Lira Ardain, and then tomorrow is probably going to be some port action. And I'm also going to try Turn Zen Tropical Island. But yesterday I tested Nuva Steer. A Nuva Steer, while good, it does not have a really insane map that I feel is conducive towards farming the maximum amount of splinters. And emblematic, as good as it is, it's no better than like the blight maps here or getting the breach splinters here for Cheyula or other breaches. So for this method, we're doing ramparts and then we have these four watch zones. These watch zones are generally pretty expensive. I think I bought them for 100 chaos each. So they're all Cheyula watch zones. This one's Cheyula, 97%, 91%, 98%, 99%. So you actually get Cheyula quite often. I would say like one in three or maybe one in four. And then if you pick up 20 splinters, it's pretty much picking up like, what, 20 chaos on the ground. So it's very, very good. Now the other breaches are not really worth that much, but you can see that I was able to farm a good amount of breaches. So these ones are 18 chaos. These are 22, 19, uh, Unatol is 44, which is really good. And then Cheyula, the money maker is at one point, what's it called? 1.1x or so. So... These things do add up and then they don't really cost that much and they also add a lot of mob count to the actual delirium because there's so many mobs. Excuse me while I'm doing this trade real fast. So this is actually one of the items and this is pretty good timing because I wanted to explain why Lyra Ardain is so good. Is that you could also get bone helmets as is one of the drops from the region. So we use these scarabs right here which is Rusted Legion, Rusted Blight. And then Rusted Elder, or you can use Polished Elder for more Elder items, and then you use Polished Breach. So what that means is that you can get Bone Helmets that are Elder base quite frequently. I've gone like 3 or 4 already, and you can see it sells for like 55 Chaos, so it's just some nice profit on top. So, with these um, Scarabs, these maximize the number of mobs on the map. So Legion, you get a Legion encounter, it stops the fog, and it also maximizes the number of monsters. Blight is actually the most overpowered one because of the, what's it called, the nodes on Lyra Ardain, which grants it so that the Blights spawn 100% more non-unique monsters and it also spawn 150% faster. And then you also are able to get more chance to get Blighted maps. So it's very common to get Blighted maps. If you actually look at my Blight Oil tab, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 Blighted maps and they go for like 
around like 30 to 35 chaos each depending on the tier so you can see that this region has a lot of outputs so i wrote down on this little list here what the input cost of the map is so you have like six chaos for the polished breach scarab it might be a good idea to bump this up to a gilded breach scarab it depends on the cost of it and cost efficiency rusted blight is like eight chaos now this thing will always pay back for itself because you pretty much get a blight map i say in like one in every two maps and then the blight map itself is 30 chaos right Rusted Legion is 4 Chaos, Rusted Elder is 2 Chaos, and then Delirium on Map Device is 16 Chaos. And the total cost comes down to around like, what, 36 Chaos for the map. Now outputs, you get Simulacrum Splinters, I did get like 8 or 10 over the course of the night. Or 8 or 10 full Simulacrums. So that's like what, 0.4 Exalts, because I think a Simulacrum is like 1.2x or so. Or 1.3x depending on the time of the day so that's like 40 chaos already so that more than alone covers the cost of the map then you have Chayula splinters which are pretty common and then all the other breach splinters you get then you get blight maps and then you get random currency that you'll find and then you get legion splinters and then you get random elder bases to sell and then you also get cluster jewels to sell so you can see all of this stuff after the fact that this portion is all pure profit so all it matters is how fast you can do these maps now, ideally, for every one of these maps, you want to put Alva on the map device. Alva adds three temples, and inside of the temples are a bunch of mobs, so you can get maximum mob count. Now, I do run out of missions, right? But Alva does help it. Alva will make the average almost 110, 120 pretty consistently every time. But at last, you have to farm more missions. I do think you'll probably farm in this one because it says areas have 10% chance to grant additional Alva mission. And then you'll probably take this node in the middle that says area has 10% chance to grant an Atlas mission on completion. Then you probably want to use four of these stones in Lexa Joris that gives you more chance to get Alva mission when you complete the zone, right? So then you just put in a bunch of Lexa Joris maps and then speed farm it. So you could pretty much make it so that this is the only like tier 2 or tier 3 map that drops or 3 stones and then you just rush the shit out of the maps that's how you can replenish the alba missions later on and i do think the alba missions are really really op having three extra temples pretty much guarantees that you'll get a hundred splinters every single time in this region now burial chambers it was a lot harder to get a hundred splinters but that's why i moved to this region and the blight maps and the breach is just free money it adds so many mobs to the map so I highly recommend this region and trying out Ramparts. It's a pretty good layout map. Only problem with the map is that the second floor sometimes spawns a breach that goes to the first floor, so you can't really do anything about it. Now, it probably, I'm going to showcase a full run so you can see how it goes. Now, some things to keep in mind, like don't get discouraged if you get like 100 or less splinters. A lot of the splinters is complete RNG. So the f later on in the map that the, what's it called, the league mechanics spawn, the better. So if you get like Blight at the very end of the map, you'll get 100 plus pretty much guaranteed. If you get Legion at the end of the map, if you get Alva missions towards the end of the map. If you see like Cassia at the very start and like multiple Legions and Breach at the start, then you know that it's going to be kind of mediocre and you can expect it to be a lot less. But then sometimes you'll get this perfect run that you get 200 Splinters. So this method is pretty fun. It's fun to see how you can optimize it because there is a tangible number about improving it, right? You want to see if you can get 200. So in the run, I'm going to showcase 141 and you can see what I did or what I didn't do. But it was pretty lucky. I think Blight was towards the end, as you can see in the video. And this method does have some like input cost, right? So you don't need a headhunter, but you definitely need a very good build that can do like six layers or seven layers of delirium rewards. At 7 layers, the mobs are pretty tanky. They're probably around like 100% delirium level or 90% or whatever you want to call it. So you do need a pretty strong build. You do need to invest in these watch zones. I think Una Toll might actually be better because it's more consistent. And Una Toll pretty much means that almost like 50 or 60% of the, what's it called, the breaches would be Una Toll. So that's something to keep in mind while doing this. So I highly recommend trying out this region and trying out ramparts i do think it's probably one of the best maps you could possibly do for money the only way you could better is if you choose a region that has a t15 t16 map and use a plus one level stone and then try to hit the jackpot of getting a level 84 cluster jewel for spell damage aura effect or 
I think minion damage or something or minion light H HP or totem HP. I'm not really sure what it is, but basically I personally really enjoy this method and I hope everyone is able to try it out. So I'm gonna play the clip with the video so you can see how the method works. I'm alone, I'm a broken home I gave you all the bricks that I own And no, I'm letting go I'm breaking these walls down Breaking these walls down If you want it, I shouldn't fly to home But if you want to travel, then go alone Yeah, what's the point in us if I never know yeah, If you're gonna leave, I'ma let you go I'm tired of the pain Go away I'm tired of the pain
Anyhow, you can see that the meta is pretty high octane gaming. There is a lot of like butt clenching moments. Make sure. Oh yeah, bit one big tip is make sure you always place a TP every now and then. This is like even though it's soft core, you don't want to die because if you die and you get started at the front of the map, you're gonna lose the delirium mirror guaranteed. So you can pretty much use like the second floor of ramparts as a checkpoint. Just think of like play you're playing Mario Kart or something. Then you have like checkpoints where you put down a portal. So make sure you have a lot of portal scrolls. And make sure, unlike me, don't click and like when you click the portal to put it down, don't like exit the map. I actually did that a lot of times and it is incredibly tilting. Now, I do think there will be other methods. I do have another method in mind that I might share, which involves logbooks and potentially splitting them. And But I do have to try out more logbooks. I do have these. So I will probably do some logbooks tomorrow on stream if anyone wants to check it out. Because... In reality, this league is pretty good. Like, even though the league mechanic itself is not really that rewarding. Oh, yeah. By the way, in terms of expeditions, <laughs> Tujin is so rare. I did not even notice that Tujin was that rare. When if you follow my strategy from last time, you pretty much will end up not doing expedition like 50 or 60% of the time. Because Gwenin and Rog is always in the map. I don't know why. I don't know if they ninja nerfed it. I never really noticed it before. But I guess Tujin and Danik are just really rare compared to the other two. Which is quite unfortunate because the two common ones are completely garbage. But that's just my two cents about Expedition after trying it out a little bit more today. But like I was saying, this meta is pretty fun because you can pretty much choose any region. Like I was already doing New Vestir, Lyra Ardain, you could probably try Lexa Joris, Valdos, or Turn Zen. And that's kind of what 3.13 was like, right? 3.13 you were able to farm any region. And I feel like that's kind of back in the game now because of the map device it's a shame that it's not because of the league mechanic that's for sure but the map device does allow farming other regions and i do believe there's good diversity now in endgame obviously the best money of the game is hosting five ways or crafting or something like that or flipping items but this is probably the best money in the game i think if you're actually playing and don't want to loot an absurd absurd amount for nemesis currency because you can see that looting is not going to be that absurd because everything drops at the end. But anyhow, everyone, thanks for watching. I do stream every day, so try to catch the next stream when I do stream.